How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. Long story short, if this is your first time watching or you missed last Monday's episode, um, this is actually the second half of a two-part episode. I had too much footage. I had to break it up. It would have been way too long of an episode. Um, but long story short, me and my good friend Zach, who is going to be taking over my fishing charters for the business, uh, we went out fishing whack the fish rod and reel up top um, and that was la last Monday's episode and this second half of the episode is after fishing for about three or four hours we hop in with our dive gear and see what was down there so um, some pretty cool stuff happened so check it out enjoy and that is all I don't even have to shoot anything it's already been a stellar day I have mangroves the jello tails <laughs> there are so many mangroves. Welcome back underwater, everybody. I did want to say again, I know I love to repeat myself, but a lot of you guys skip through and miss stuff. This is the second half of a two-part episode. I'll put a little link on the screen. Um, if you want to see the first half, we rod and reel fished this spot for a few hours before we dove in. And just in case you missed it, I have recently announced I will no longer be offering rod and reel trips. I will be only focusing on spear fishing and sword fishing, and that's where Zach comes in. Um, he's one of my best friends. I've known him for nine years. He's actually eight generations born and raised down here in Key West. He's a born and bred fisherman. So if you're looking to get out and do some rod and reel fishing in Key West, his info will be in the description. Um, but yeah, this is my first dive. We did about three dives each just to get acclimated. Um, it was my first time diving this spot. I wanted to see how everything behaved. You can see there's just fish everywhere. Snappers and barracudas, permit, some sharks, goliaths. Um, I just wanted to get my dive reflex going. I notice a lot of times if I take a couple dives, get everything going, and try not to shoot something deep right off rip, um, I'm more calm throughout the day, and it actually worked. I had a lot of really good dives on this day. So just wanted to get down there, check everything out. As you can see, it's an incredible spot. Can't thank Zach enough for taking me here. It's the first time I ever dove this spot, which is a treat for a charter captain because we normally have all our own spots, and we know exactly where we're going. So it was nice to be shown something new. There's some eight, seven, seven, eight pounders on that dive. Whoo! That, that, I didn't see him. That is unbelievable. So this is probably, I can't remember, maybe dive four or five. You can hear him on the surface. I was very mellow this day. I felt great. Um, maybe it's because Zach was running the boat. I wasn't stressed about operating the boat. Just very smooth, everything was relaxed. I'm pulling my gun, tucking my head, closing my eyes, just very mellow. Release all the tension in my feet, my legs, my shoulders, my neck. Um, just, again, nice, very long, mellow dives. They felt great. So this is my first drop with, with the intention of trying to shoot something. Everything was being so friendly, I wasn't really too concerned. I just wanted to get down there, see what came in. Try and find a bigger one. Scanning around quite a bit. and Again, I'm looking for that 9, 10 pounder, but I see when this one ended up going just over 7. Big mangrove. And you can see these things come in quick. I paused for just a second because I, quite honestly, I thought the shark had the fish and I didn't want my hand around the line. So if you watch that back, you'll see. I very briefly paused and I realized that he missed and I had another window to try and rope it in there, and I did. Um, kind of a little crazy bit of a situation, but um, I got pretty fortunate there. And I know it looks um, pretty wild, but there's quite a bit of separation there. You can tell the shark is very clearly after the fish. My hands 
kind of looks like a bundle, but they're they're very clear of the line. I know it's hard to tell, but um, uh, that was a pretty wild one. And Zach right there on my back. Nope. Well, that was a one-time thing. Nope. We've been diving together so long, we kind of know what we expect out of each other. And he was he saw the sharks come in, and he was immediately there. Wow. Hey, let's see if we can catch him on monofilament. That got, <laughs> that got the RPMs going. Woo. So another reason we wanted to dive a, a few times before um, we shot is because there, there were sharks. There's obviously sharks around. It's something I don't deal with, but um, I wanted to just not size them up, but I wanted to see how they were going to behave. Every single dive, they came in to look at us, but they, they weren't really in our face. They were just kind of curious, um, just cruising around. So all it took was one dive, and they turned on just like that. So... We actually turned it off for about 30 minutes, um, and we started chumming a little to try to get the snappers to come a little higher so we didn't have to dive deeper. Um, and it was strange. The sharks disappeared. Um, we chummed. Like I said, we sat there probably 25, 30 minutes without shooting anything. Uh, and the sharks disappeared, and Zach went down. He goes, I'm going to do a test dive and see if they come back. You can see the second he shoots, I'm down on him just to kind of fend anything off. And strangely enough, blood in the water, chum in the water. Um, no sharks in sight but realistically I've had that happen before so I wouldn't say it's out of the ordinary <laughs> nice one Zach got his fish up, no issue. Um, snappers were kind of coming a little higher, so I wanted to give it another go. The first fish I shot was probably about 65, 70. Um, and you can see here, I'm only having to drop 25, 30 feet. It's just less chance of you know sharks coming in, less, less water you have to cover trying to retrieve the fish. Trying to get a stone shot, I just couldn't for the life of me stone one. And you can see I bring it in quick like I normally do and don't even see a single shark. We had plenty enough snapper for the week. Just the curiosity in me wanted to, wanted to do a couple more dives, excuse me, um, and just kind of check it out. I, I had seen a few studs, like literally pushing 9, 10 pounds out in the distance. But like I said, they were real smart, just kind of hanging out on the edge. And if you turn towards them, they just turned and rolled deeper. Uh, it was very difficult to pursue them. And just to give you some reference, these the smaller of the fish you're seeing here are, are four pounds. Uh, the average fish was probably five, five and a half pounds. Um, just truly unbelievable to see. And what I was doing was just getting at depth, kind of pausing and, and just hanging out. Like a lot, a lot of times, like I said, when you pursue them, the big smart ones are going to just kind of push out just a little ways from you. Um, this dive, I was just kind of enjoying the moment. So if you'd like to practice your breath hold on this next one, I will uh, I'll throw a timer up on the screen. Like I said, I was having some pretty good dives. These were a little above average. Um, I think my average dive was about a minute 30, but um, if you want to come along with me on the next one, practice your breath hold. Get ready. I know you had a shot on those mangroves. There's, there's an eight or a nine down there. 
So I'm on the surface, completely mellow, relaxed, make sure everything's loose, no tension anywhere. Deep breaths, slow, not hyperventilating, long, slow, deep breaths. Get ready, we are going down. So right here, I pull my gun, tuck my head, and close my eyes. Long kicks, I'm literally just loose, everything's fluid there's no tension anywhere I'm thinking about everything from my toes to my jaw just really want to be loose as possible a flexed muscle is burning oxygen it's it's tense it's using energy so I get about where I want to be kind of playing out I'm still sinking a little bit looking for that nine to ten pound mangrove I'm not really kicking as much as I am just kind of steering with my fins. Kind of put the brakes on. I'm about 75 feet. Scanning around. And a pleasant surprise. Just like ghosts, they show up. Some African pompanos. You can see some little ones there with streamers. And streamers typically mean they're short. And there's a bigger one in the back. And I'm patient. I could have thrown a going away shot, but I waited. And luckily that fish came back around and turned. And I got a little bit of fish fever here. Not that I can't do this dive, you know, I can do a two minute dive if I really want to. I just try not to push myself and um, seeing, that, seeing that fish late in the dive kind of pushed past what I normally would. But I'm mellow, let my reel do its thing, reel's peeling out and um, let that fish run. I get to the surface, surface and I get straight to work. Open that reel up just in case that fish takes off again. Uh, and immediately I'm working on that fish and uh, I'll preach line man I, I preach line management a lot and you can see I'm working this fish pretty fast I'm swimming forward the entire time I'm always moving you never stop when you're pulling whether a float line or reel line up to the surface you can see I'm swimming forward throwing that line behind me every couple kicks I'm checking just to make sure it's not wrapped around my leg um, if you get wrapped shark comes up and grabs it you've got yourself a real problem You'll see Zach's behind me, just spotting me, make sure the the dive or the, the shot is good. Like I said, we've dove together so long, we kind of know what we expect from each other. Staying clear of that line. And what a pleasant surprise, could not believe it. African Pompano, love these things, such a beautiful fish. Got a pretty awesome recipe, stay tuned. <laughs> Hot dog! Look at the squid coming out of his mouth. Just when I thought. No, octopus. Oh, wow. Sorry, buddy, you just had a beautiful meal. Just when I thought you couldn't get any cooler, Zach. <laughs> you put me on an African pump. <laughs> Look at the lips on him. Look how blue they are. Woo! Thank you so much, honey. Thank you, thank you. Oh. What a beauty. No, there was four. Three came in with stream three came in with streamers. Um the there was another legal one though. Or no, two with streamers, one legal, and this one was in the back. There was uh all I saw was four. One last thing I did want to mention um, when it comes to re-spooling your reel. If I have the ability, I'll drop my shaft down. I want to use that weight to spool that line on nice and tight. If you, you know, a fish takes all your reel line out and you pack it on there real loose, shoot a big fish and it pulls real tight, it can cinch inside itself and your reel can lock up. So I try to spool that reel line back on the reel as tight as I can so it's ready for next time.
Y'all gotta see these fish. My friend Zach. Oh. And just when you thought the, the big mangroves were enough, bonus. What a, what a day. Like, I'm dead, don't let him lie to you. Got nervous fine. Oh, that one's bigger than this one is. That is a full size mangrove. I saw a couple that were nine, 10 pounds, but after that little run in with the shark, you know, I had enough shooting fish down deep. Seriously. Cannot thank Zach enough. Wow. I haven't had that much fun in a long time. I'm gonna <laughs> love an African pump. Oh, you got me good too. What? I said, man, I'm gonna make a couple more drops, see if we can see an AP. <laughs> next, next, next drop. I couldn't believe it. Dang. I'm gonna, I don't know if I said it, Zach runs a boat similar to mine. It's a 28 Whitewater. Um, I'm gonna put all his info in the description. I'll probably pop a little tag on here as well on the screen. Uh, you wanna get out and do fishing? Obviously, you wanna do diving. Give him a call. <laughs> he does it all. Like I said, I've, he's been one of my best friends down here for nine years, and he's taught me most of what I know, so. We are done out here. We've got plenty of fish for the week. Um, I was gonna do mangrove snapper for dinner. I've been doing that so much lately. I think we're gonna have some African pompano. I'll start dreaming something up and we'll see you guys at the dock. So this is not one we get very often. And I don't know that I've filleted one on camera, to be honest. Called an African pompano. Probably one of the best fish, the best eating fish on the planet, in my opinion. And as you saw there, just absolutely gorgeous. They have a taste to match it. So once you get about past the, the, the dorsal fin, Normally you run your knife pretty much down the very top and bottom of the fish. And there's almost like a bone or something there that kind of prevents you from going all the way to the edge, but just kind of skip over and down it a little bit. talk about this a lot. A lot of people like to t go over the ribs. Some people take the ribs. I take the ribs. Woo. So you can see it is a beautiful just white, clean meat, great for sashimi. Um, it's pretty much, you can't really mess up African pompano. It's good cooked, good raw, good ceviche. Um, this fish, I'm actually gonna save the entire thing. Um, we're gonna eat half of it. The, the recipe I've got in mind, we're gonna do some tacos, some seared African pompano tacos with a, well, you'll see it later. Um, but I'm gonna save the rack, the ribs, um, and then some of the fillets as well, and I'm also going to smoke that and pick all the meat off and we use it for salads. Make a nice Caesar salad, throw it on top. So we'll break this guy down. Like I said, these ribs have a ton of meat left on them. I can't remember if I said that. So pretty much what I do is I probably won't show you this on this episode, but I'm gonna just kind of clean that up a little bit. I'll brine those along with the fillets and smoke that, and their bones are so big and thick. It's a huge rib bone, and uh, there's all kinds of meat there to be had on that guy.
They have a very thin skin. Try to run more parallel to it than down on it like a snapper or a grouper. You, oh, I already felt it. It broke. I felt it. Hard to beat. Alrighty, I'm in the kitchen. Sorry, you just got me tonight. Madeline's busy with some real estate stuff, but we've got our African pompano. It's not very often we get this, so I wanted to try something new. Ooh, got a hair on there. Um, what I've got going, I'm browning some tortillas. I've got some oil coming up. As you can see, it is hot, hot, hot. Um, and this is my African pompano. And all I'm gonna do is sesame seeds. I put a little bit of salt on there. We're gonna make some tacos. What a nice, healthy layer of sesame seeds. Come on. Just want to sear that just a bit. This is going to be almost a, a sashimi seared style taco. And what else I have? I've got um, avocado, some cabbage. I'll talk about the sauce here in a sec. It doesn't take much. I mean, that was. Maybe a minute. A minute on that side. Oh, I lost my oil. Just want to sear the edges, brown those sesame seeds just a little bit. There we go. That is perfect. Golden brown. All right. So I'm actually gonna let this cool for a couple minutes. Um, if you leave it hot when you slice it, it tends to crumble. So I'm gonna let that cool and I'll be back in just a few. So I probably could have let this go a little longer, but I'm starving. You can see how it flakes just a little there. An African pompano, if you haven't had it, it almost looks like it's going to be um, stringy and have tendons. You can kind of see them in there. But it is, it's so tender. It's, it's um, really unbelievable. It's right up there with Wahoo. It's like a white tuna. So like I said, I've got cabbage, avocado, Little bit of African pompano. And this sauce, I, so I actually, someone left a comment, I need to start writing people's names down. Someone left a comment that kind of inspired this. They said mayo, I think it was mayo, um, ponzu, and ginger. Um, and I kind of just twisted it a little bit. I actually use sour cream. I'm not a huge fan of mayo. So I use sour cream, about a, about a tablespoon of uh, finely grated ginger. Um, I actually use soy sauce instead of ponzu. I feel like the ginger and the citrus of the ponzu would kind of be overpowering. Um, and I actually threw a little bit of sriracha in there just because I like a little bit of spice. So sour cream, about a tablespoon of grated ginger. Um, Maybe a tablespoon of soy sauce and um, sriracha to taste. So I have not tried this yet. Looks all right. This is the first, kind of a sushi taco type of deal. Let me go with the small one. This is going to be messy.
Wow. I like the sauce. I may have, may have went a hair over with the ginger. Pretty gingery, but. I can dig it. I think it needs a little more sriracha. Mmm. I can dig it. Give it a 7 out of 10. What do you think, Dipsy? You want one? You want a piece? Come here. Sue Chef Tipsy. But that is all I have on this one. Thanks so much for coming along. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, I think I said it. If you watched this one first and were kind of confused, there's a um, an episode before this one that'll make the whole thing make sense. I had too much footage. I actually had to break them up. So, um, But other than that, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. As always, I do appreciate your time, and I will see you on the next one. Later. Say bye, Tipsy. Bye-bye.